Hello everybody, Tom Matuska here for Facebook Live Thursday afternoon and uh, I'm here with Mandy Swart, Brett Wingfield and um, it's a cold day in the Iowa Great Lakes today. Um, this is kind of like the Arctic here and we have winter games coming up and what are winter games more famous for than the polar plunge and I heard you're doing the polar plunge this year. What? Did it once? <laughs> I've done it a couple times, oh, but there will be probably three to four hundred people jumping in West oh, Okoboji, yeah, beautiful frozen over yeah. white West Okoboji. And uh, if you're ready for an adventure and a trip, the Iowa Great Lakes is the place to be this weekend, or the place to stay away because it's here. <laughs> it'll be busy. It'll, it'll be, be busy. Cold. It'll be busy. Um, I drove across uh, the bridge last night and Smith's Bay. I mean, it looks like a city out there with all the ice fishing houses and vehicles on the on the lake it's unbelievable the amount of people here already and it's only that was wednesday fourth of july out that walmart corner. <laughs> yeah. i bet it's bad i bet it's yeah. bad. <laughs> um well what's new in your world kids kids yeah <laughs> <laughs> kids and we're, we're so crazy busy <clears throat> right now and we appreciate each and every one of you guys and thank you for being patient for us not doing live but we've kind of been focusing on other stuff right now and the supply company has been crazy, crazy, I have noticed. Also, again, thanks for being patient with your orders. <laughs> We've been trying really hard. I think uh, forms were six days out on orders, um, and then normal orders are going within uh, 24. I got a mic. I got a mic. <laughs> normal orders are going within 24 to 48 hours. So thanks for being patient. I know you guys are used to next day turnaround. And we have a crew down there. Uh, pouring foam like no other oh, there, man. you know, just taking names and pouring foam. Yep. And it uh, um, doesn't matter whether it's the Habitat foam, Habitat department, um, there's a big crew there either pouring it or painting it or packing yeah. and shipping. Same with um, Corey's Great Bird Products. I mean, they're just, I can't, can't keep up. There's such a huge demand as well as um, all of the foam deer heads, you know, life-size antelope, everything else. It's crazy. We appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you. Okay, do you want to tell them what you've been up to? Sure. We just put out, oh my goodness, thank you, sorry. We just put out um, our 2023 catalog. And we've been getting hit kind of hard because a lot of people that don't have it yet are requesting it. And the problem that we had this year we had to make a really hard choice. Um, a lot of people wanted to go digital. Not even you, it was actually Not mom. Me. It was mom. <laughs> wanted to go digital. And uh, we, fought, we fought against it because we're not quite ready, and I don't think a lot of our customers are ready to go digital catalog only. So we compromised, and we only ordered a select number of catalogs. The reason being paper went up 70%, and it just got really expensive. So we took all of our customers, current customers from last year, we put them on the automatic catalog list. So if you place an order that was over $100, you automatically got a catalog. Same thing for this year. If you're placing an order, you'll automatically be on it for next year. And we just kind of weaned out a lot of the wasted catalogs that we sent out. Um, but we only have a select few. There's a few left here, so if you call and talk to the girls, they'll put one in your box if you haven't gotten one. Otherwise, we're not doing bulk mailing, so I, I'm truly sorry. It's annoying for a lot of you, but it's also frustrating for us too. So we do have an amazing digital catalog online. So if you go to www.matuskataxidermy.com, the girls put this together, and it's an awesome flip book. So you can flip through the whole thing. It's linked, each product is linked to go directly to the website that you can go to it and then basically put it, add it to your cart, look through other options and all that. That's better, yeah. Yeah, easy peasy. And that's always updated, isn't it? It is always updated, as best as we can do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as close as we can. <laughs> yes. I remember the days when we used to do a, <clears throat> a flyer or something like that and we'd, we'd mock it up on the computer, we take it to the printer, and they'd say, use the back of the paper, the paper's free, you know, it's our labor that's, that costs some money, go ahead and use the back of the paper, and they kept saying, paper's free, paper's free. Paper is no longer free. Like yeah. Mandy said, it went up 75%. Um, paper is unbelievably yeah. outrageous. It's bad. Well, should we show them some of the neat things that we, 
um, added to the catalog this year. Let's do it. I don't know where to start. Um, we have a lot of, lot of really nice stuff. Um, many of you, um, our deer tax thermostats start with uh, the great XP forms. Um, and this is one behind uh, Brett up here. And um, the name XP stands for extreme precision. And they really are an extreme precision form. They fit well, they look deary. Um, you just can't say enough about the XP forms. Uh, we have calls every day about uh, people have used them for the first time and how nice they mount. We, we make the joke about they mount themselves. Not really, but <laughs> they, do, they do go together with ease and they take a lot of the frustration out of mounting deer. Um, <clears throat> just some different things um, that you'll notice that, that other deer may not have. Um, could you hold one of these up there and show them they have a, any, of the, any of the buttless deer ears and that's a champion choice ear, but uh, they will index right into the side of the head and in any position, whether it's a forward position or you can do it in a back position. And you'll notice that the, the contour of that plastic ear liner rests in there, takes very little um, clay to hold it in place and just a little bit of clay to um, use for building your muscle yeah. and it'll even go in an aggressive position a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, all the way back if you want to. Um, the anatomy is here so there are ind indications here where your anatomy starts and stops so you can tie it in from your ear liner right into the into the indication there on the foam and makes it very you can't easy. You can't get them too far down the neck, you can't get them too far forward, um, they kind of index right in where they're supposed to. And not only do the buttless ears work, the pre-sculpted butts, like for instance, um, the hollow concave ones will fit right in that there's a little outline in there and that will show you right exactly where it goes. You can feather the union with a little bit of clay. So ears are a really um, big advantage, the ear butts where they are located. Um, another thing is uh, the, the eye, back of the eye is a 32 millimeter plate at a very natural alert position. So if you're using a 32 millimeter eye, whether it's a um, aspheric, forward look, whatever it happens to be, a little bit of clay in the eye, push it right against that plate and it takes all the guesswork out of the eye set. Level your pupil with a level and um, you're good to go. Uh, nostrils. Nostrils are as deep as we can make them in the molding process. Um, they're quite detailed and um, it takes minimum amount of modeling with a tool, uh, maybe a little epoxy in there to reshape them, but it's already got the outline and the detail and the depth for you. Um, lip line is something that I really like on um, the XP forms. The lip line is a really natural um, length without being too short. There's some forms out in the market that have a real short lip line and it's very difficult to tuck the lip skin because there's too much skin to go in there. Um, there are a lot of forms out there that the lip line is an inch or inch and a half longer than that and it makes it look like he's smiling, you know. Yep. Um, this is a real lifelike lip line length. <laughs> Say it Say three, that times. three times. Um, Another thing, the, the tear duct, the lacrimal gland in front of the eye, it has a really nice um, entry contour as it goes um, up under the skin in a natural position. So if you cut that, that slot with a little upward angle, the skin will lay in there really, really nice. Um, briskets is another thing that we're kind of proud of on the XP. Um, when you uh, thin your skin properly, align it, um, you got leg stubs, on the, that Brett's holding on to there. And there we, we usually tip them upside down and shape that brisket, but the armpits will lay right in the valley. Very, very um, natural. The center of the colic will lay, uh, oh. <laughs> <There we laughs> will uh, line up really nice. And a lot of people struggle with briskets and armpits and where the arm lies and they get that, uh, colic of the armpit hair going way up yeah, the side way, of the deer. Yeah. Um, 
this won't let that happen. It's very, very easy to um, mount an accurate taxi and accurate skin on that. So that's the XP form. And um, why don't you tell them about your baby? Oh, the nose? Not Allison's. <laughs> no. <laughs> the nose. So we have um, worked, and, and I think they've seen a few of them in the, in the previous catalog, but we've worked on a large nose that goes along with the XP form. Um, this is a replacement nose that was cast from <clears throat> a real deer and has been modeled to fit to fit the seven and three quarter inch head. Um, so we now have them that fit the seven and a half inch head and the seven and three quarter inch head, and they can be ordered with the mannequin if you want to, or or the nose can be ordered separately so that it can be put on any of your favorite deer mannequins. So. Um, Again, the advantage of this one is that we have the lifelike cast um, of all of the interior of the nose. I'll go right back up there and show you. Um, you can see clear through it. If, if you had a light behind it, you can see all of the septum detail. The curvature of the interior of the nostril is a nice relaxed position. It's not flared wide open. Um, and it just fits. It fits the, the skin really well. Do a good job of thinning the rhinarium and, and some of this area around here. Tuck it right in and minimal finish work. Um, you're out the door with a really nice looking deer. And go back on our um, archives a little bit and you'll see Brett and I did kind of an intro um, humorous oh, yeah. little thing where we had a contest. And I took the deer head with my tools and sculpted the inside of the nostrils. And I suppose um, if everything goes really well and I don't tear out pieces that I didn't want to, I can probably do one side in 15 minutes to 20 minutes. That's a half hour per deer head. You took the artificial nose that you developed and simply there's a little um, template that goes on there, I think, yeah. and you just followed the template, cut the foam nose off of any mannequin, it doesn't have to be a, a XP, um, cut it off of any mannequin and you put a little hot glue on and stuck it in. <clears throat> As everybody was watching, you were done in seven minutes and it took Pretty me quick. a half hour to yeah. do two sides. I think that's one of one thing that's everybody's hang up with artificial noses is yes, you're paying more money for a commercial deer but you're looking at $16 for the nose, but you take out all your extra work, how yeah. valuable is your time? Yeah. So yeah, it's absolutely. something you really Plus have accuracy. to Plus accuracy, there's no way you're ever gonna, you're yeah. never gonna carve out a nose and mount the skin in there to look as nice or as accurate as this. Yeah. They look really nice. So instead nice. of thinking of the extra money you're spending, <clears throat> you have to look at the time that you're actually saving by using yeah. it and splurging on it. Yeah, there's some considerable efficiencies in artificial parts and and we see them more and more with our earbuds. Um, there are some neat, really neat cast earbuds. There's cast noses, there's open mouths. There's, there's just some really cool efficiencies out there that I think will help. And Brian Olson has uh, mule deer in a couple sizes, and I think yeah. he's got a third size coming. And um, it, they work exactly the same way on, on the mule deer, sagebrush mule deer. Cut them off, glue them on, or some of them are can be purchased already with uh, yeah. just like this with the nose on it. Yeah. And the nice thing with these ones too is the they're above the lip line which allows you more detail on the lip as well. Yep, easy to tuck the lip line. Um, and, and you don't, really well. as you're cutting it off, you don't cut the where the lip skin tucks, you don't weaken right. that or anything. Right. Oh, random um. question. Um, I used your Precision XP form last season. They were very nice to work with. Um, Adam has a random question. What's a good way to go about applying your pheasant waddle flocking? How do you oh, wow. apply your pheasant waddle <laughs> flocking? Um, That's a good Corey question. They do make, they do make glues for that, mm -hmm. for the flocking. And you would just, I call it stipple it on, kind of dabble it on around the feathers, push the flocking in, let it dry and blow it off. Um, we typically use something like Mod Podge or Elmer's glue, which dries clear. Just make sure that you're flocking. 
Uh, maybe the yeah. matte, if they can get yeah, it. Yeah, a matte too, well. yes, not a shiny one. Yeah. 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 Just use one of your noses on my first mount. Are you coming out with the replacement nose in a small? I found the medium was too big. That's a great question. That is a great question. Yeah. We do have one mocked up. Um, we just have to get it into production. But They're a lot of work. I they, mean, they really to are. Be, to get a nose that's going to look good into a production yeah, state there's. is, I can't tell you the amount of hours. It's a lot of hours. And we've to do done. We've gone a little extra <coughs> in making sure that not only do we have a great nose and our symmetry is on, on point, but we also take the extra time to make sure that the contours conform to our mannequin. And so that's kind of the extra time that it takes to, to, to make sure that we shape that and make it really easy for you to install it onto the mannequin so that the shape matches nice. And not only do we have noses for the mule deer and the white tail, um, we have an antelope we have an that antelope, you developed. Yeah. Yep, and like we said with the, with the, ooh, I wonder, can I make it? It is not quite, um, there we go, I got it. Um, just like with the XP, we've made one that matches the Gary Zayner mannequin, um, a great antelope form. If anybody hasn't mounted on Gary's antelope, I don't know if there's a better one out there. They just mount a really nice antelope and we had the opportunity to make a cast of a nice fresh antelope a few years ago and work this into production so you can see that that fits and it can be ordered um, on one of our sizes, I believe. Um, and it's just a nice medium, just an average antelope. So it goes on there very nice. There was no changes to that. So. And to mention, um, we have a Impala cast that with yeah. careful measuring and <laughs> comparisons um, we used one on an Impala that was absolutely yeah. beautiful when it was but finished. We, in fact, we liked it so much we did it twice. Yeah, <laughs> it worked on two Impala. <laughs> it worked good. Um, it's very, very close and uh, would not take you much work if you no. wanted to alter it that way. They, they work really well. And we also have another antelope too. Um, oh yes. Yeah. Uh, Champion's Choice. Would you like to tell them about that, Mandy? Um, this is an exciting line that um, you guys are familiar with already. Um, Clint Rickey and Tim Gretchen came up and developed a lot of these products and they have done fantastic, fantastic work. The detail on these are great. Um, they're user friendly. I oh, mean, I tell you the pictures I see of people using them. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot great. of people they out really there doing some cool stuff. They really make it easy for you to make an open mouth mount. Yep. But, and so, they come in a, a Flemin. Yep, Fleming and Split Lip, and uh, then we have a couple other noses as well. Um, one of the things, I don't know if you guys saw, but they were kind enough to, which one you got? You got the antelope? So we um, have, no, I have, I have a white tail, Split Lip. So the Split Lip white tail in the catalog, the 2023 catalog, you'll notice that we have small, medium. We actually also have a large that they came out with after the catalog. Tim kind of kept sneaking products in there as I was getting close <laughs> to print. Um, but so we have the small, medium, and a large in the split lip. And then we also have the mule deer large, an axis large, and then the antelope medium. And then we have the two Fleming. I think it's mule deer large and the white tail medium. Um, the split lip, they were kind enough. I noticed they were doing a sale on theirs and I reached out. And so they would like to offer, extend that sale to our customers as well. So if you're watching this, we are also doing 20% off Champion's mm -hmm. Choice split lip mouthpieces. So definitely if you're wondering and wanting to try them out and what they're like, this is your chance. That's huge savings. Yeah, huge that's savings. A, so there's a few um, open mouth white tail on the market and these are by far the nicest that absolutely. we've ever been around. Those guys have been putting that stuff together for quickly. Um, have built themselves quite a library of some amazing And you're going to want to paint this before you do it. Um, mm -hmm. You don't want to get paint on the teeth. Um, we used to paint them all with rubber latex so we could peel off. Yeah. Now you just take the teeth out. It's like a puzzle. Yeah. It's or an dangerous. old person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're kind of like stars. Uh -huh. They come out at night. <laughs> but yeah, take advantage of that. 20% off the split lip. Um, they have the Fleming, the split lip. We have some of the noses. And then along with the noses, we have their ear liners. 
And we have two sizes of the white tail. Um, this is the medium. You have medium and the small, and then they also have the earbuds. So yeah, this is we're excited medium. to be able Here's to medium. add um, their products to our line of white tail that we carry. Um, so really. And um, these are nice ears. They've been yeah, they've they been are. flying off the shelves. Actually. Um, here's the the ear bases, similar to other ones on the market. And you have half back and back. Muscles all built up for you. Um, maybe a little bit of clay to feather in the union so you don't have an air gap there. Um, nice products, really nice really products for, yeah. from Champion's Choice. Great guys. Um, bears, great guys. we have bear ears. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, gorgeous bear ears. Inner, inner ear sense. detail, all detailed for you. Very, very, very impressive. Nice. I don't know if you can get a close up of that inside of it, but it's. Very, very, very detailed. That's pretty dark. Somebody posted a picture on Facebook. I saw it, and it was crystal clear. Oh, really? Yeah, they had a see, flash, obviously. But. And, and as well as bear ears, this is not um, Champion's Choice, but it's from Nick General. Yep. Um, yeah. We have a large selection of really nice bear noses. Um, kind of a, I mean, if you... If you don't find it in our catalog, he probably doesn't make it. There's, I mean, we have, we have bears that could be used for grizzlies and brown bears. bears yeah. We have eight sizes that are in the catalog, and then we have four to five extra sizes that are online only. And you'd use these very similar to um, the deer antelope. Cut off your nose, um, line this up, blend in the union with auto body putty foam, um, whatever you want to hold it in place. Yeah, and the detail in those is exquisite. It's really, really well detailed. Um, you can remove the, the rhinarium of your, off your skin and glue right up to the edge of the plastic. And it, there's a nice little recess, so that should glue right in place, minimal finish work. Um, that's a I really, mean, with really any, nice with product. any, whether it's Champion's Choice, there's no way um, you could ever achieve this detail or the inner mouth detail economically to no. make a profit in your taxidermy work. Um, this just takes the work out. It looks looks nice. Um, if Clint Ricky did it, says it's right, I'm going to do. It. I'm going with it. You know, I'm not going to argue with those boys because their accuracy is unsurpassed. Um, same with this nose. This is cast from a real bare nose, um, the inner nostril detail, um, you can carve and sculpt all you want, but you're not going to get there. So one of the questions is, what measurement would you take to make sure you're ordering the correct bear or deer nose? Um, do you have a uh, little chart in here? And it's got a nose to eye. So if you've got a a small bear, maybe a, let's say a four and a half inch nose to eye. Um, you're going to look down here and find four and a half. It also has the weight of a bear, so it's like yeah. 70 to 90 pounds. Um, you're going to have to, you know, your customer says, oh no, he was a 300 pounder. Well, you're going to get a nose like this for his 300 pounder, yeah. or, you know, you're going to get something like this for his 90 pound bear. Uh, and there's a little bit of guesswork and fudge work, but it goes by um, nose to eye measurement as well as size of the animal. In our white tail deer, we, I don't believe we have the nose to eye measurement in there, but you nope. said it before, so the large would be... Our large generally fits our seven and three quarter. Um, it also fits the largest of the seven and a half inch forms, um, I think our 21 by 23 inch neck um, with the seven and a half inch face, it fits that very nice. Um, and then the medium will fit most of the other seven and a halves going down. Um, we also found that it fits really nice on the Southwest deer as well, um, on the bigger Southwestern deer. Which now all those are available with noses, yeah. so another new. Yeah. And these are reasonable enough that if you're in bear country and do a lot of bears, you know, you're going to order multiple noses and you're going to be able to, you know, compare. You know, another great thing that those are, those can be used for is a great reference. Reference. Tool. Yeah. Any of this. Yeah. I mean, 
Champion's Choice. That's a great reference. Yeah. Um, the other thing that we have is a pretty large selection of change out heads in whitetail, mule deer, bear, bobcats. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's more. Um, there is. Antelope. There is. Yeah. Do we have an antelope? We've got sheep. Sheep. Uh, um, we have some wolves, mm -hmm. um, a mountain lion, a leopard. Okay. Um, we have a lot of change Wait, somebody put these on. Good. Um, <laughs> a lot of people are afraid of change out heads because they've never done one. Um, I think we've had uh, some of our live shows, at least one or two, mm -hmm. um, putting on a change out head. Don't. Don't get scared if you look in the catalog and you can find your, you know, deer selection that you want with an 18 inch neck and 20 inch over the atlas, but the face is too big or too small. Um, this is very easy to attach. Buy a change out head. They're inexpensive. Um, cut it off, cut your form off, line it up in a natural attitude and position. Um, Usually we'll put some kind of a rod in once we're sure that it's going to um, be in, we're not going to change it so we don't have to cut through a rod, which we've done before. Um, then we'll foam in the, the gap and make it conform to the rest of the form. And you just turned a seven and three quarter inch deer head into a seven and a quarter inch deer head. Yeah. It's way easier to do that than cut the face, shorten it up or lengthen it and then suffer all the anatomical flaws that you yeah. added in. Again, that's just more efficiencies. You know, it's just work smarter, not harder. Um, I think you can see that with a lot of the offerings lately. It's just taxidermy is getting easier and easier. Yeah. That's like a body shop. I went into the body shop a couple years ago and they know exactly what it's going to cost because they're not going to pound out your dents. If we're yeah. pounding out dents or sewing up bullet holes, for instance, if you want a comparison, <laughs> yeah. it's going to take forever. They're not pounding out dents. They're ordering a fender for yeah. my 2001 <laughs> Suburban. <laughs> they order those parts. Yeah. Um, anyway, great, great products from um, the XP Sculptors, great products from Champion's Choice. Great bare noses from Nick General. Um, all neat stuff in the catalog that you're going to find. And speaking of XP in the catalog, we should be having some new forms hitting the catalog, hitting the online catalog real soon. Yeah, there's new several XP new ones. Sizes that, yep. that several new ones for this catalog. Um, there is, swing that uh, upright around. He's new, and we have a, a line of those. The XP forms. Very nice Bob Father and Nani stand you have right it there. Is yeah. nice. It is a nice. Um, so we have semi sneaks, sneaks, um, and this is the latest and a relaxed upright. Yeah. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous form. I they, think how many um, of the relaxed upright did we, semi upright, did we add? I think there's quite a few. Six without noses and then four of those accepted yeah. the white tail nose. Yeah. So we have a pretty good selection all the way from, um, you know, 19 inches all the way up to 20 by 22. And those guys, Mark and Brian and Pat, are working on those. And we'll get a bunch sleep. more yep. next week or in a couple weeks. And, um, I mean, we have a regular fiberglass department <laughs> going full we, bore here. We do. We do. We do. Toll Yoakum is watching. I got to have lunch with him the other day, and he <laughs> said that he loves ordering online because he can see what's out of stock and what's not out of stock, and it's so accurate. And I had to inform him that it's not as accurate as it looks. <laughs> uh, we're getting so many orders coming in and out and stuff that would call or put it in the notes. We'll call you if we're out. If we can substitute something, we will substitute something. Um, if you're wondering by the time we get your order, it may have come in downstairs and it just hasn't processed through to the website yet. So it is as accurate as we can be, but by the time your order ships, we might get it in. <laughs> He was shocked. And in addition, Corey's been pretty busy, right? Oh, man. Yeah. Yes. 
So we have a whole busy. line of bird bodies from Corey Carruthers, Wildlife Illusions. Um, they're really detailed, they're really pretty. Um, look like this. They've got um, index for the ball joint of the shoulders. Um, these are actually different than his others. His others were, um, did not include the femur attachment, um, whereas these include the space for the femur bone, or at least the distance for the femur bone. Um, a lot of times, birds doing different things will stand up far enough that their um, scaled foot is actually off of the bird, and you can't, you can't wire it in because it's, it's down here. Um, if you leave that femur attachment, this bird can do anything he can do in real life. They're much more, um, you have much more positioning freedom. Um, very, very nice bird bodies. And how many do we have? We have... The molding department has been busy. <laughs> busy, busy, busy. You think we've been sleeping, but <laughs> taking oh, a vacation. Um, you had quite a few. I know there's, there's a lot left to get molded, but we're pumping them out as fast as we can for you. He's got flyers and standers of, of just about everything, yeah. I think, now. So. Yep. Working on a turkey, um, so talk to yeah. him today about getting that finalized so we can get that going for you guys. Um, getting close on a sandhill crane, Sandhill crane, pheasant. big Canada goose. Yep. Which, yeah, the pheasants yep. new yep. this year that you would see the pheasant, uh, the extra large Canada goose, and a sandhill crane that would be new from last year that is in the molding process now. And what else do you want to show them? What do you have over there? Oh, man. Um, we have a very cool new addition. Um, you guys that have to keep stuff in stock have a tremendous job. <laughs> and in hopes of, of doing that, um, Tom found a new airbrush line um, from a really, really exciting company, I think. Um, We've had great luck with Iwata airbrushes over the years. They've done fantastic for us. Um, but like everything in this day and age, supply chain issues become a problem. And um, I think it just became an, another option for us to offer to customers another real quality airbrush line. We looked at quite a few. And um, the harder steam back line of airbrushes um, really rose to the top. They've got some really cool stuff. They're this is pretty. They, they, they are. Have color they options. have some cool color options, um, and their functionality is fantastic. I think people have, <laughs> not mine, <laughs> grown to expect that that we put one thing that that Tom's always done is put his products to to the test, and we well, have we test really <laughs> we test them all. We have we've really tested these and I can gum up an airbrush so good. <laughs> um, um, but we've been, gosh, we've been painting with these for, you've got yours at home and I've got one at home and we've got them here exclusively here. And I bet we've put six months behind them and they've been outstanding. Really, really good. This is, this is the Hansa. This is a single action. I'm um, a little different function that the, the Air flow is back rather than down. Um, trigger travels back. You don't push it down, which is a little counterintuitive. But if you use this for a minute and a half, you catch on pretty fast. And then the one that we started with is that one. And that's This exciting. is a chameleon, and they come in orange yep. and um, like this, an orange version and a blue and red version. U.S. of A. And they come in, uh, I think you get a couple little cups with them, mm -hmm. or they're yep. available for them. I'm not sure if yeah. they come with it. A um, couple different needles, sizes. This takes, yeah. I think, three sizes? Three, I think, possibly <clears throat> two. Um, and I think that's why they call it the chameleon, is because it is, it is changeable um, between a 0.2 and a 0.4 needle size. It comes with the... Are you sure it's not because it can turn from... Orange blue to orange. blue, <laughs> maybe. I um, think that's the chameleon. Um, and it's a it it's a double action brush that actually has a really cool setting on the back that um, some of us that like to paint with our training wheels, our governor on the back, um, my core will the really appreciate. Told you that uh, he did. He did. Um, but it has a it has a preset governor on the back, and we'll probably spend some time on. A, an actual feature for airbrushes and Phoenix paint and so forth coming up soon. But 
Um, mm -hmm. These are exciting. These so are we great. just added them. Oops, oh, go sorry. ahead. Brandon wants to know, what do you recall for first time airbrush users, I need to get one? So for a first timer, what would you say? Kind of depends on what you want to spend. Yeah. Um, the Pache line of airbrushes um, are typically less expensive. Um, a great airbrush, uh, yeah. great not only entry level, but uh, advanced airbrush too. Yeah. Um, the VL airbrush, now I've been doing this since the 70s. Not one of our viewers is that old, I betcha. <laughs> um, and I got a VL airbrush back then, and it has not changed. It might have changed a little, but I can't tell what's changed on it. That's how it's stood the test of time, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, Pache is a great airbrush. Um, Iwata is one of the finest airbrushes you're ever going to get. They have a whole line of airbrushes. They have a real reasonable single action SAR, it's called, um, paints. Richard says 1976. Extreme, <laughs> <laughs> extremely detailed. He's looking at $150. <clears throat> and then you get into, then you can just go on up. I mean, really the can. Iwata um, Custom Micron is probably 600 yep. or more. Yep. Um, and I think these little chameleons are two something. Um, high two, low, might make three if we get both needle offerings. Um, 287. Um, it might be interesting to note that it, an airbrush is not the artist, does not make the artist, you know. Um, right. I've been to a lot of shows and seen some exceptional work and some of the finest taxidermists. I said, I, that's a natural question. What do you use for an airbrush? Because your paint job is really nice and they use a $35 H Pache yeah. airbrush and they achieve that kind of results. It's not the person so much as it's yeah. the product. I'd say too, like with our catalog, the guys have used every single airbrush in our catalog and there's a reason it's in the catalog. It's been one of their favorites at some point yeah. and then they just get used to the other one, they'll start using that. Um, we, if you go back, Brandon, to our old videos, there are so many videos on airbrushes and the guys answer all your questions and which ones they pick and price points of each one. They'll lay them all out in front of you. but. Um, you can either go to YouTube and watch or our Facebook, but we have a lot of airbrush videos for that. Um, that's yeah. kind of cool. This is a fun thing. This came from Harder Steenbeck too, and it's just a cool little stand. We've, we've said many times the best money a person can spend when buying an airbrush is that $15 clamp on yeah. stand. Um, and it truly is to have a $300 airbrush sitting on the side of the table precariously and hitting the ground and bending the needle, it'll make you very sad. Um, the neat thing about this stand is it can go anywhere. It doesn't have to clamp to the table. It's very heavy. When you get it, you'll be impressed with the weight of it. You're not going to tip it over um, and it'll sit anywhere. You can set your airbrush down and, and it's very, very handy to have. And it's compact. And it's compact. It doesn't pocket. take up a lot of space. <laughs> it can. Actually, it can. It the legs can. come yeah. off and it can go right in your pocket. Um, but along with the, with the airbrushes, something that I think um, a lot of people have grown to expect from us is we've got parts for the Harder Steenbeck too, which mm -hmm. I think is important. Um, it's, a, it's a European line, um, but you can get all of the parts right here. Um, they come with, we can get seals for them, needle offerings. Um, all of that stuff's available too, so that's pretty exciting. Um, Great product, really nice product. It really is. It really is. Um, airbrushy stuff. Do you want to move paint? into some paint? Yeah. Um, Createx paint can't be beat. Um, we have switched probably two and a half years ago, maybe almost three years yeah. ago now. Um, we have painted with lacquer paints. I'll bet you for. As old as you are. <laughs> and uh, we've breathed the lacquer fumes. I've tried to change many, many times. And it wasn't until, um, and Cretex has been around for a long time, and I guess I was unaware of it. Um, Cretex is one of the finest acrylic paints. Cleans up with water. Um, very, very nice paint. It's color fast. It's never going to fade. A lot of my lacquer paints that I've used in the past yeah. fade. Um, I can grab a walleye off the wall right now and show you. And 
it, it looks like I never painted it. It's just that over time it has faded. Um, the acrylic water paints stay color fast. Yeah. Um, UV UV stable. They've been very very good to us, and and it has been a learning process. We've done some things different than we did in the first weeks of painting with Createx, and it's. It's only gotten better. The experience um, has gotten better. You very, have very to good. take care of your equipment if you're going yes. to use any kind of a water based paint because latex acrylics, um, that type of paint, when it dries and hardens, it goes through its dry stage, it doesn't want to come out of anything. Yes. So you have to take care of your equipment so that's why it's not so good for me sometimes. Is that yeah. why you go through so many different airbrushes? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Nonsense. Uh, <laughs> what um, else we got? Um, Andrew, I put the number for that airbrush holder under your comment there, but it's 134306 and it's 2475. Um, another thing that we don't have out here, um, and I think they're out downstairs, but they're, they will come, is that little, um, what's it called, nozzle cleaning set. And it's it's little and it's chrome and you unscrew the two yeah. pieces it's got a needle in it just like an airbrush needle stick it in your nozzle and softly twist it and it scrapes all dried paint out yeah. we think that is the best thing Worth we've ever had does it work with just harder steinbuck airbrushes or others we well? think we think others okay. yeah. we haven't tried it on everything but i think it'll work on on yeah. anything it's a it's a great little tool Okay. Show us something else yeah. in your little pile of goodies here. We got our books, our Dan Barrett's oh, yes books that he is kind enough to share pictures with us. Um, we have the turkey up close. We have the turkey all around. And Dan just is an amazing photographer. And he, the pictures he captures of nature is just amazing. But. So we put them into a book, so if you're looking for a good reference, this would be a great one to purchase. Also makes great Valentine's gifts. <laughs> oh yeah, we got all kinds of times for presents coming up. Um, new this year, we did a sheep up close, sheep all around, turkey up close, turkey all around. There's a sandhill crane. Um, there. And Dwayne Dewey, this is for you. I was going to say, they're yeah. all fantastic, but that sheep one the first page you open up to is amazing. Absolutely amazing quality. And it, it just gives you a little bit of every angle. And there again, there's not one that's the same, but man, it, you sure get to see it. Same with the bird books. Um, we kind of partnered up uh, with Dan Brips and then Corey Crothers came and he painted some bills and we did some step-by-step. -step. So if you're a beginner and you're ready to learn how to paint your beaks and bills, we have right now, we have a wood duck, a mallard, a pheasant, a pintail. Um, Maybe Kate can zoom in on one. this just a little bit. Um, right now they're still on order, so they should be here when I get my butt in gear. But <laughs> right now we have four available. And it basically gives step-by-step step the colors he uses, um, and then it's paired up with Dan Brips's live image, so you can kind of see what it looks like in real life as well. Now this is Corey painting as they're taking the photographs. So you see every color that he puts on a wood duck bill, as well as a live duck over here, yep. um, for you to match yours with. Each page has one to two steps, and then a live image on the right. Um, these are nice. They're kind of foolproof. They turned out really well. So we got, we'll got. we try to get Corey talked into coming some more and getting some more out there, but right now we have four of those. Isn't that nice? You have your new receipt book, your taxidermy receipt book. Look at that. I'm coming to the receipt book. I just can't <laughs> quit looking at these cool pictures. Um, the receipt book's up there. The receipt book, um, the guys use it every day. So we kind of just, if they're using it, you guys are going to use it. So we tried to come up with that. Um, it has a nice carbon copy. So one for you, one for the customer. Most of you will go through oh, some kind of inspection, DNR, 
Um, if you haven't, you will someday. Um, here's all the information that all the state of Iowa as well as the federal is going to ask for. Um, name, address, street, um, telephone number, um, species, date of kill, where it was taken, as well as information about pricing. Did they pay with a credit card, the deposit, that sort of thing. Okay, you're going to fill that out. There's a carbonless copy underneath here that you can give to your customer. A little rip line. Um, the game warden came to check us. Oh, I suppose it's in December, I think, even. Yeah. It was early. Yeah. And uh, the first thing I do is get out my receipt book like this, which has everything in there in chronological order. And he looked at it. Um, we had a game warden um, previous who used to photograph every page, and it would just make you really, really nervous. He'd come <laughs> in, and he'd get out his phone, and he'd click, and he'd turn every oh. single page. And for all the work you can take in in a year, that's a lot of memory in his phone, but he did it anyway. And, but uh, this one looked through our receipt book, and I never even showed him the record book, which is basically a copy of this, except it's got uh, um, cards that go with the specimen. I've never even looked at that, and I was so nervous. You know, he went through all of this, and he said, that's really good. I wished everybody would use one of those. And it's just something we came up with after being checked from time to time. People like them. If you get checked and that you have something like Great that, um, yeah. customers are, or the game board's going to for sure appreciate your record keeping. You have Taxidermy University came out, and this has been with us for probably a half year now, but they came out with their molding casting, um, the turkey head. And then oh, we're yeah. supposed to have, which I just talked to him today, we're supposed to have the fleshing one, and the fleshing one he is still working on and editing, oh, wow. but that should be available soon as well. I'm sure he'll get in time for Valentine's Day, <laughs> right? But That's so they do a great wants. job with those videos if you guys <clears throat> haven't yet or if you're looking to get started. Um, the 101 videos all have the products that they use in the video, the Matuska products they use on the back so you can kind of follow along. And they're good for beginners as well as veterans alike. I yes. mean, Absolutely. everybody will find yeah. something valuable in those. If you're yeah. ready to up your game at whatever level you're at, definitely check out the Taxidermy University DVDs. And we have new Pro One chemicals. I only brought two up, but I believe we have about five different kinds that we brought in in the last, again, we're kind of bringing stuff throughout the whole year, but these have been, and they just, I tell you, Pro One Chemicals go fast. Um, we got leather tanning. I think this is a um, bird and fish tanning concentrate. Yep, you we know. have an adhesion. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> That'd be good. Um, and then your habitat. I have to sneak off and get kits. It's nice to be back. Thank you guys, we so appreciate you. The guys are gonna keep going and give a giveaway. So make sure you like and share this video for your chance to win next week and see you later. <laughs> Turn it off. It's off, it's on echo. I don't want a hot mic. <laughs> um, this is something that, that is very, very helpful. We, we've used these forever, only we made our own. Um, it's, it's an ear carding system that with, with paper clips, um, four pieces for a deer. Once your deer's mounted, your hair is all groomed. You put one in the front, one in the back. It's yeah. uh, perforated plastic sheeting. Um, paper clip them all the way around. That way, once you have your skin aligned, <coughs> before your glue tacks up, you hold it in place with paper clips and this carding. Yeah. Use these over and over and over and over. That's the nice part, yeah. Use them over and over. We've got them in our toolbox and most of the time we can find both sides. You know, yeah. everybody has something. I've uh, been to people's shop that had some kind of real firm, fl firm flexible cardboard. Um, I think I've been to Mark Gonnering's shop and he used uh, linoleum, thin linoleum, sure. you know. Everybody yeah. has a method of doing this, but um, it really holds your edges nice. After the glue sets, you can take these off, and then you can groom, groom, groom your hair. Yeah. But how many species are there? Oh, man. I think we've got eight to ten, I would say. Um, we've got them in most of your common elk, deer, uh, mule deer, 
Uh, might be a couple different sizes of whitetail. Um, I believe we have a moose. I think we have a bear. Um, and then there may be some exotics too. I think we've got some of the more common exotics as well. Yeah, just throw them in a little baggie and put them in yeah. your little workstation, use them over and over and over. They're very, very handy. Yep, keep them paper clipped together so you don't lose the two halves. Um, tweezer set, these are really nice. 12 piece teaser, tweezer set. Um, it's got every kind of, uh, there's got tweezers, I don't even know what they're for. Pick and fiberglass. Um, what did you hands. have? You had a fiberglass sliver the other day. And, um, yeah. But that's a pretty nice set. Stainless steel. Yeah. And lots of tools. I think Mandy's got lots of tools. Um, always does. She's kind of fun. She was pretty proud of her colored hot glue. Yeah. Um, we always use hot glue on bases, and you have to camouflage where you got it or get yeah. it out of there, cut it out or something. Um, she's got several different colors. Yeah. <coughs> handy. Um, and an array of habitat. Holy cow. A lot of really, really nice stuff. Was I on? Um, oh. <laughs> um, lots of fun stuff. Um, most, most all artificial. Um, so nothing's going to d deteriorate or break down. Um, uh, but some really cool stuff, a lot of the things that, that, I won't even pull the whole thing out, but a lot of the, the selections are wire. We like to make sure that we can kind of control where some of this artificial stuff goes. Um, so they're wire-based, they're flexible, um, kind of fun stuff. And we like to, and you don't have to use the whole thing. You can use just a small portion of it, you know, yep. cut it, use pieces of it. Um, yep. We have a few varieties of this type of a vine and um, sometimes it gets discontinued, we have to find a new one. But um, this is a nice additive. You can use it on birds, you can use it on fish, you can use it on mammals, bear bases, all kinds of stuff. A um, couple different evergreens. We've we can never have enough cedar evergreen or piney pine yeah. or juniper things. Yeah, yeah. Um, this, this I think, it's a type of fern, if I recall, coral leaf fern. But to me, that looks like something that gets snagged on a hook when we're fishing. That looks definitely... Uh, when we get these, when we get the habitat, we look at it and kind of evaluate it. Is, is it passable? Will it, will it fool a customer yeah. as being yeah. real or will it look lifelike? Yeah. Um, and there's so much to choose from, but um, a nice variety of these. This, I think this can go underwater too. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure what we'll call that one, but... I know um, that's kind of a, a water stuff. type look too. Yeah. I think we're getting this in our lakes. It came from I Lake think, Michigan or something like that. I'm gonna take over the lakes. Um, this looks like a spray branch with buds, and this one feels like it's a wire base as well. Yep, um, that one. So you can manipulate those. Looks like we've got it in green and. Uh, Kind of a natural brown, dark brown color. Um, and I, I bet these aren't even all of them. This looks like a snow flocked. Great with your cardinal mounts. Yeah. <laughs> cardinal would or, look really good with this one. Or your Valentine's Day wreath that, <laughs> or centerpiece. Um, some broadleaf grass. Um, this looks like water grass. Too. Yeah. Everything looks like it goes in the water. I'm not sure why. Um, but a couple different colors, it looks like, a darker one, a lighter one. Um, and this says leaf and twig. So there you go. Leaf and twig spray. Green, um, some of those spring bears, uh, turkeys, things like that. Some of the greens work out really well. Um, we've had in the past a lot of fall colors. And you know, I, always, I always say you need elements when you do a base. Yeah. Um, rock work, your rocks is an element, your dirt is an element, um, green leafy is an element, you know, yeah. viney stuff is an element. The more elements to a point, um, you can yeah. turn out some really realistic lifelike work. Uh, it looks like one more, I'm sure there's a hundred <coughs> more, but this is all we ended up with, but another branch and twig spray, again, wire backed. Um, 
The nice thing is, if any of you have ever been to the hobby stores looking for a particular kind of, of habitat, they never have it. It never seems to be there or it seems fake and it just doesn't seem to be the right one. We've kind of sorted through the hundreds of selections and um, picked the best of the best and and uh, this stuff looks pretty good. And then, really good. you know, don't get too attached to it because <laughs> that's true. It, it seems like the companies that supply us buy a lot of 100 boxes of this and we think it's the best ever yeah and they sold all 100 boxes and they won't be getting any more till they go to market yep. but well, uh, we've got a anyway, good selection now we have a really good selection of habitat um for everything whether it's birds you know mammals yep. fish whatever it happens to be different times of year spring fall summer and that's a sampling of what we have um that you'll find online and in the catalog um, yep. New Competitor's Choice are coming out weekly. Um, Corey's Bird Bodies, again, yep. coming out weekly. I mean, we're, yep. um, there are a lot of work to, to mold, and we got people working on them all the time. Um, try the new noses. Um, try the new airbrushes. Give the uh, um, Createx a try. It's a really, yes. really great yep. paint. Um, we just are excited about all these new products and things and like try that. Try the new flip book. Um, that's that's going to be that a really is. good one. That's a, a great tool. And again, um, the online stuff, we can keep updated more than just the annual printing of the catalog. Um, I know the girls are working feverishly all the time on putting in new things, taking things out. And so you're telling me on the flip book, I can just flip a page, and I like that bobcat form. I click on it, and I can put it right in my basket. It takes you to our website, that exact product. The exact product, yes. but then I can put it in my basket. Exactly. Whereas a catalog, I have to say, ooh, I want that. Ooh, I have to call the, where's your number? See, okay, there it is, 1-800. All lines are busy. It takes forever, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. No, we got that new phone system. We have a, we, <laughs> we have so it's still a state-of-the-art phone system that... Brett might know how to use it. I, uh, not yet. <laughs> no, don't hold me to that. We did have a couple um, people who tuned in a little bit late and are wondering about our catalogs um, and if they will be sent out and when. Um, uh, to... Mandy went through that. Yep. They can play it back. Um, catalogs, if, you order, if you're a customer of ours and order from them, you're going to be getting one um, yep. and should be going out or have gone out. Mm -hmm. If you haven't ordered from us before, um, and you placed an order of $150. $150. One will go in your box. But make sure that you use the discount code catalog23 in your checkout page. Okay. Yeah. And, and we'll I get think, you a catalog. Yeah. Otherwise, go to the flipbook. Flipbook is in always the there and always available. The website is always being updated, so mm -hmm. they can go to that. Um, and you can even download the Flipbook catalog if you want and print it out yourselves. That's always an option. We've made that accessible. Oh, put it in a binder. Sure. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we did with Createx. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so now we get to give something away. We do. And we're giving, I oh, think, yeah. away oh, that's a, good a receipt one. book. Is that right? We are. That's a good way to start off the new year. Then all you have to do is like and share, like and share, like yes. and share. Like and share this video to be entered in next week's live drawing. And the winner today goes to Sean Bartz. Sean, congratulations. Fill that thing up. All right. Everybody should have one. Okay, come to the Iowa Great Lakes for Winter Games. Yep, Winter Games this coming weekend. And we'll see you next.